up, down, up, down. All right, guys. Hey, this is uh, Trevor. Um, I'm recording this for my um, intro to video games class, history of video games. Um, we were supposed to pick a game to play. Um, I picked Asteroids. I wasn't going to pick Pitfall because I love Pitfall. But I couldn't find it. I didn't want to play it on my laptop. Um, I'm playing on my Xbox. Uh, so my second choice was Asteroids, and they had it. So I went ahead and bought it. It was like a dollar. Uh, there's different variations. But I picked the uh, original OG Atari Asteroids. Okay? Um, and the reason I picked Asteroids is because... Asteroids reminds me of Galaga, which I grew up playing Galaga. I grew up playing Paperboy, uh, Pac-Man, all those old arcade games uh, because my dad and his generation grew up. That's all they did. You know, that's all they had to do if they weren't playing sports or, you know, if it was nighttime or something. That's that's what you had. You had those arcade games. Um, so that's kind of where I get my interest in uh, these games. But... Uh, this game in particular is the first time I've played it. It reminds me of a simpler version of Galaga. And basically, what we're doing here is we're flying around in space and we're shooting asteroids. I mean, it's, it's very simple. And the, uh, the goal is to survive as long as possible. And the more asteroids you blow up, the more points you get. Um, that got me. So, anyways, uh, so history on it, history on this game, it was made by Atari, as I said earlier, in 1979, and at the time, uh, 1979, um, Atari was the king, the powerhouse of video games, um, which at the time, all they had, all, all there was, was arcade style games, um, but they dominated that, so... You know, our, our uh, Atari made this, and it became very popular. Um, the predecessor to this game was Lunar Lander. They were making this game called Lunar Lander before this, which is kind of similar. And, you know, they were in development of Lunar Lander, and they came out with this. I lost. They came out with this, and it became so popular that... They just completely cut off Lunar Lander. They quit producing, or uh, they were designing Lunar Lander, and they just completely quit doing that and started making more of Asteroids because it was so popular. Um, and it's significant. It's significant at the time because that was only 10 years after the uh, our first moon landing with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and those guys, uh, which was why Lunar Lander was made. And so this is kind of just picking up off that, improving on that. That's why it was a hit, in my, I think, in my opinion, because people were interested in space back, uh, exploration. People were uh, interested in what NASA was doing because we're fresh off the moon landing and everything else is going on in there. You know, that, that's a good, t that's an exciting time. So that's probably why this game was such a hit. Um, there was two producers, two guys that helped design the game. Uh, the one that came up with the idea was uh, Lyle Raines. Uh, he presented the idea and then Ed Log programmed the game. And of course, if you know anything about games, uh, you can't have one without the other. The idea is just as important as the programming of the game. If you can't program the game, then there is no game. So those two guys created uh, Asteroids for Atari. Um, it was a huge success, as I said. There was two sequels um, on the consoles Atari 2060 and uh, 5200 and 7800. Uh, the sequel was called uh, Asteroids Deluxe, and it had a similar gameplay, but the graphics were color blue, and a shield was added, which sounds a lot better to me because the graphics on the original Asteroids is just, well, there's not really any graphics, it's just lines. You're just, it's just black and your white line uh, as a mouse head, and then the Asteroids are just little blacks and white circles. So, but at the time, you know, at the time this was 
was the real deal, man. This was the real deal. Um, so, it kind of reminds me, I said earlier, it reminds me of Galaga, simply because you're kind of, you're evading uh, the asteroids, which in Galaga, you're evading the aliens. Same concept, that's the same gameplay. Um, and it kind of reminds me of like uh, Pac-Man 2, um, because unlike Galaga, if I go through the left screen, if you're watching, I go to the left, I come out the right. And uh, same thing for the top, you go to the top, you come out the bottom. So that's kind of, that's kind of cool to me. Um, you don't, you know, uh, Galaga, you're just sitting there on the bottom. You, you can't go anywhere except in your little space that you have down there. You can't go up because if you do, aliens are up there and they'll get you. So you kind of got like this little bottom uh, square that you got to maneuver in. But this you can go, it's, uh, it's revolutionary. It's a revolutionary circle. You can go anywhere you want as long as you don't hit an natural. So let's see here. I'm actually gonna try to play the objective on this one that I bought was a thousand. I'm at 400. Let's see if I can actually play the game a little bit. And I'm gonna turn it up a notch. <laughs> let's see here. Ah. I'm actually hoping that if we do, which I'm sure we will do this again, but I would like to get like Gal or like a maybe 70s or 80s arcade games. That would be amazing. I mean, this is the 70s, uh, 80s, 80s arcade games. Ah, well, this is technically the 80s. This is 1979. But you get what I'm saying. Maybe a little color. Uh, I feel like that's probably one of the weaknesses. Of I won. <laughs> it's probably one of the weaknesses of the game. There's no color. It's very bland. Uh, which again, at the time, I'm not. I'm not hating on the game. I think it's. I think it's fun. Um, but at the time, there probably wasn't much else to offer. Um, so I don't know. Um, regardless, I do think that's probably a weakness. Um, the kids back then, um, they had more imagination than kids nowadays, so I'm sure they wanted some color. I'm sure they, you know, there's a little something extra. Uh, it probably got boring after a while. Um, oh, crap. That is not what I wanted to happen. But yeah, um, that's probably the main weakness. The uh, main strength, I would say, is just the ability to literally go anywhere you want on the little map you're playing on and you can go left to right up to down um through the revolution uh the revolutionary screen that makes the game a little more exciting so i think that's probably its main strength it's a very simple game there's really not much to go into detail here i mean it's it's just uh it's your brick and mortar game. I mean, it's just it's the building blocks to a video game, and uh, it's just kind of like the grandfather to arcade games, in my opinion. Uh, it does have another strength. It's playing music. I like that. It's not just there's no narration or anything, but there is a little bit of music. It's kind of giving. Me, it's like a little like a sci-fi kind of outer. I mean, it, it would sound it sounds something cool like outer space themed. So, I think that's probably a strength. It's not a huge strength, but uh, it's definitely added effect. Um, overall, uh, if I was a, a boy during this time, if this came out, I would probably be playing this a good bit. <clears throat> <clears throat> but um, anyways, that's Asteroids, guys. Uh, my time's about up. So if you guys have any questions about Atari, and uh, asteroids, just comment on my...